In today's video, I'm going to cover the techniques that I use for finding all of the different photography locations that you see in my online portfolio and all of my YouTube videos. So when I first got into photography, like many other people do, I just looked on Flickr or I looked on Instagram when it first came out and I said, well, where are the most popular photo locations? And then I would just copy those people and then I would just go there and then I would shoot. And after doing this for about two months, I came to the realization that it's actually really boring to go shoot the same locations as everybody else. And it's also a way that you will ensure that your photos don't stand out because if you're shooting the exact same location, no matter how good the light is or the sunrise or the sunset, your photos are always going to look very close to everybody else that's shooting those exact same locations. I also found that it wasn't much of an adventure just to look up a GPS coordinate to travel there and then to go shoot it. So it got really boring over time. So what I decided to do was learn how to go backpacking and learn how to go hiking, but also learn how to read topographic maps and read the weather. I think one of the most underutilized photography skills is being able to read weather learn about weather patterns, and then look at topographic maps and be able to find locations that might be really good for shooting. So you don't even have to be going out for backpacking trips. If you can learn to read weather and topographic maps very well, you can just go out for day hikes and have really, really good photos come out of these that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So today I'm gonna to go through the tactics that I use to set up my different shoots and then how I brainstorm and plan for these shoots before I go out. So the first thing that I would recommend to everybody is download Google Earth onto your computer. You don't wanna use the desktop, or I guess I should say the web app version of Google Earth. Make sure to download the actual software program, it's free. Google Earth is the first thing that I'm always going to use when I'm scouting locations to find good sp photo spots. So what I do is I just open up Google Earth and I say, okay, well, what time of year is it? That's the first thing you're always gonna look at. If you have a trip coming up in the winter, and you don't have any equipment to go up in the mountains when there's snow, well, that automatically takes the mountains out of your search criteria. If it's the middle of the summer and you're thinking, well, I'd like to go to the desert. Well, the desert's 150 degrees in the middle of the summer, so I wouldn't recommend that. So the first thing is think logically about what time of year it is, your actual skills, your actual equipment, and then what places you could actually get into for that time of year. Now, you can see behind me there's equipment for every single different landscape every time of year. So once you get deep into this game, it doesn't really matter. My goal was to be able to open up Google Earth and say, well, it's winter, I wanna go up into the mountains. Well, I got stuff for that, I got climbing gear, I got snowshoes, I got everything else that you would need to get up into the mountains. So that's the first search criteria. Write it down, say, okay, it's the winter time, where do I wanna go? And just brainstorm some ecosystems that you might wanna to go to. Maybe you wanna to go to the ocean, maybe you wanna to go to the forest, maybe you wanna to go to the mountains, whatever, it doesn't matter. Narrow down a specific area that you'd like to go to for the time of year. Then you can just pop open Google Earth and you can say, okay, well, here's where I live. Do I wanna fly? Do I wanna drive? How do I wanna get there? If the world is your empire and you have an unlimited spending and credit card ability, well, you can pick anywhere on Google Earth and say that's where I wanna go because I have infinite time and infinite money. But if you just wanna travel near your house, it's a whole different game plan. So narrow it down that way second. So once I do this, I'm doing this full time. I'm spending 100, 150 nights of the year out backpacking in the wilderness, taking landscape photos. So personally, I don't really care where it is. I live in the Pacific Northwest for the specific reason that this is a great place for landscape photography. So I can load up my vehicle with enough expedition equipment and food for a two month trip and just go out and go backpacking in a bunch of different areas. So it all depends on how you're actually gonna do the trips to have a realistic idea of where you wanna actually go next. So once I open Google Earth up, I'm targeting and pinpointing the actual area that I wanna go. And with looking at Google Earth, I can look at it and say, well, where is gonna be a good spot that is going to showcase this landscape or this ecosystem extremely well. So if I'm going on a trip to the mountains and I'm staying down low in river valleys the whole time I'm in the mountains, I might have as well have just gone to the forest instead. There's really not a point of going up into the mountains unless you're gonna get high up and actually see what's going on and shoot on the ridge lines and shoot the peaks. So if I'm going on a trip into the mountains, I'm first looking at Google Earth and I'm saying, well, that looks like a really cool spot to shoot. I might be perched up on a ridge line looking at a bunch of other peaks in the distance. You can actually drop a marker down on Google Earth and see what it will look like 
if you look out over that landscape. So that's how I'm brainstorming. I'm just using Google Earth to get the creative juices flowing and get myself excited for the ecosystem that I'm gonna take this trip into. I'm not making any exact plans yet when I'm looking at Google Earth. I'm just generating some ideas and I'll write those ideas down and I'll say this might be a cool spot to shoot for these specific reasons. It has really good views of this specific peak and I might be able to shoot the light in the foreground. Now, you can also turn on the lighting in Google Earth and it will actually show you how the light falls on the landscape for specific times a year. This can help you to plan a sunrise or a sunset shoot where you want light to hit the foreground and you also wanna shoot a peak in the background. So inside my landscape photography school, which is an online school that I built teaching everything I know about landscape photography, I have a whole course on scouting and planning for photo locations. So if you guys wanna check that out, I have a 10 day free trial and I'll leave a link down below this video, but it shows you how to use Google Earth and all the map techniques that I'm gonna talk about here. So check that out down in the description, but I'll turn on the lighting on Google Earth and I'll say, okay, well, the light hits directly in the foreground on this landscape. This would be great for sunrise because I want that cool sunrise light just hitting the foreground and also hitting the peaks in the background. So this will kind of get me into a specific area that might be fun to go shoot. So what you see here is I'm narrowing down from the full global scale down to specific areas within my skill sets and then specific areas depending on the light. So Google Earth is the number one tool for this. After I do that and I have a specific region and ecosystem targeted, I'm going to open up a software program, which is a web app. It's called Gaia, G-A-I-A, GPS. And I'll leave a link for this down in the description as well. Gaia GPS is a mapping software that has all the trails on it, but it also has a bunch of other cool overlays that you can overlay over the trails, like the slope of the terrain. So if I'm trying to hike off trail to get up to a really steep location, I can actually see how steep that terrain is and get a good idea if I'm gonna be able to get up there. It also shows real time weather conditions such as is there snow on the ground? Is there water in the rivers? What should I be looking for when I'm out in that landscape? So it gives you every single data point about the landscape and how you can actually get there. It runs on the computer, but I also take it and download it on my phone before I go out so I can plan that trip on the computer and then I can have it on my phone as a reference when I'm out in the field. And you don't even need phone service for this. Just download it to your phone and take it out with you. So Gaia GPS, I'll use this to first plan the hike in. So I'll look at the trails in the area. I'll get as close to the location using the trails as possible. And then I'll go off trail and often spend a week base camped up on ridgelines or any other areas that are far away from the trail. And this lets me to have time to get really used to the area, learn how the light falls on the landscape, and just learn how the weather works day after day. I wanted to give you guys a quick heads up. Right now, if you join my email list, I have a 10-day free trial, which gives you unlimited access to all of my photography courses. Now, these courses teach every single technique that I use as a full-time wilderness photographer. So you'll learn camera technique, you'll learn photo editing, photo organization, composition, how to find shots in the field, You'll be able to access and watch dozens of my expeditions out into the wilderness where I take these photos and teach you how to create them from start to finish. I designed this school to be the perfect learning experience, something that I wish would have existed when I started wilderness photography, landscape photography, and outdoor photography 10 years ago. So if you'd like to join my email list, you'll get this 10-day free trial. You'll also get a bunch of other good stuff, including access to my PDF library, which includes all of my photography guides, which you can take out in the field to shoot with you. Check out the link down below this video to join and sign up. You can cancel anytime. I'll never hold your email address hostage. I wanna provide you with the best learning experience possible. Now let's get back to the video. And by doing this and spending time in that area in my tent, I can really get a good feel for the landscape and a lot better photos come out of it. But you could use the same tactics for day hiking and work your way into the wilderness style of photography too. But a lot of times when you're seeing all of my videos or my photos from areas that are really mountainous or rugged, all these places are off trail and you need to be able to learn to navigate to get to them. So that's a skill you can slowly build up, but it will also differentiate your work from the crowd because you won't have the same photos from the same locations that were on a trail or near a parking lot. If you can get off trail and into the wilderness, then this really opens up the creative aspect of landscape photography because you have all the wilderness you can travel to to take photos. So that is an essential part and an essential thing to learn is how to use Gaia GPS. And it's going to take some time, but if you really want to learn to shoot the wilderness landscape, it's absolutely worth it. It makes the planning process so much fun and it just gets me excited to go out and take photos. So that's the second thing. Google Earth to brainstorm, 
Gaia GPS to plan in the locations of the shoots a little bit better. Now, I'm never saying that I'm gonna go to a specific spot and then planning campsites every night of the trip. A lot of people will make a trip and they'll be like, okay, I need to reserve a campsite for this night and this night and this night. I don't find that to be very interesting. It would be like staying in a hotel. If you wanna get the best shots, get into wilderness locations where you don't need to pre-designate campsites. And then you can just move with the weather and you can move on your own whim of what you should be doing next. I never wanna be locked in to where I have to be. I wanna say, I'm gonna get out into this specific area and then I'll just spend a week off trail exploring that area or off trail and on trail to get to really know it well. I'll explore a bunch of different ridge lines, a bunch of different viewpoints. And from there, once I find one that I think is really having potential, I'll put my camp down there and stay there for a while and really study how things work. And then I'll shoot a bunch of sunrises and sunsets until good light comes in that area if I get lucky. So that's the second thing. The third thing is the when and where of when I go out. So I have Google Earth, I have Gaia GPS. Last thing I use is an app that runs on the internet and on your phone. It's called Windy, W-I-N-D-Y.com. The pro version, which is about $18 a year, is well worth it. It gives you the most overlays of anything as far as weather that I've ever seen. Why this is great is you can look at a map of your area in real time on the screen, it will show you when the different weather's coming in, when it's hitting specific mountain ranges, if there's gonna be snow, if there's gonna be freezing rain, if it's gonna be sunny and clear. It gives you every bit of information, including fog, including clouds, how high up the clouds are. And these are all very essential to determining when good landscape photos are gonna come. So when I wake up every day, I'm at home, I already have these trips planned out for a bunch of different ecosystems that I can drive to in my area. I like to have about three or four different options fully planned out. And once I have them planned out, I'm just every morning checking the weather on Wendy for them. And I'll say, well, in the next week, is the weather gonna start to look good in this specific area or this specific area or this specific area? And then whenever it lines up, I'll just drive to that area and my trip's already ready to go and planned out. So I can just pack all my gear and then head out. So Wendy it's going to allow you to see weather systems. Whenever you're judging weather for landscape photography, you don't want there to be too many clouds where the horizon's blocked and you can't see the sun poke through and get good sunlight for sunrise or sunset. You also don't want there to be no clouds. So the goal is to find the transition from when there's way too many clouds to no clouds. So when there's a high pressure system, there's no clouds in the area. Consider high pressure a big bulge of pressure over an area that bulge is gonna push all the clouds out. So there'll be clear skies. Low pressure would be like putting water on a trampoline. It's gonna sink down. Well, it's all going to converge to the middle. And that means under low pressure, all your clouds are gonna come into the middle as well. So you'll have too many clouds. You won't have a horizon that's clear and you won't get good light for sunrise or sunset. So you wanna hit the transition from high pressure to low pressure, where it's going from no clouds to too many clouds. Sometimes that transition is one day. Sometimes that transition is undulating for a week and it's perfect photography condition. So looking for that transition, looking on Wendy and learning how it works, these are great ways to have the ability to judge when the light's gonna be perfect. What I'm looking for is my shooting location and then I want everything for sunrise, this is everything that's east of that shooting location, I want there to be a clear horizon, but I would also like there to be some clouds over top of where I am and that light will poke throughout the horizon and then it'll hit all the clouds. I talk about this in a lot of my videos that you see on YouTube. So that light poking through the horizon, hitting all the clouds will light them up for sunrise or sunset. The same would hold true for sunset. You want the horizon to the west to be somewhat clear, but still have clouds over you. Now the key here is if you do this as a day hike, it's impossible to hit these scenarios with those weather conditions consistently. But if you're living out of a tent, and you learn the landscape and how the weather's moving through there, and you can just sit out there for a week or two, moving to different areas, then you're guaranteed, most likely, using that method with Wendy that I just talked about, to be able to nail down some really good weather for your shots. So the more time living in the landscape, the better. I can come home from a year of travel and backpacking and landscape photography, and I'll probably get 100 really good shots a year. But if I was just day hiking, there's no way it would be that high because I wouldn't be spending as much time out there and my chances of getting a shot wouldn't be quite as good. So mixing backpacking with wilderness photography is going to extremely increase your chances for getting really good photos out in the field. So 
First of all, Google Earth. Second, Gaia GPS. Third, Wendy. I think Gaia GPS is about 50 bucks a year. Wendy's about $20 a year. So you're looking at $70 a year and that will extremely increase the chances of you getting good photos. So another thing you can do is learn about weather systems and how weather, weather works. I was an aerospace engineer at one time and to be an aerospace engineer, you have to learn all about thermodynamics. That's how heat and energy and entropy works and moves throughout the universe and our planet. This is also how weather systems work. So that gave me a great primer for understanding weather, but you can also check out the book, Weather for Dummies. This is a great primer into how weather systems work. And by understanding weather, you can not only learn what's gonna happen when you're out in the field, but you can also learn to set up your shoots beforehand so you're hitting them at the exact right times to get really good weather and light. So it not only comes down to having a good location, but you also have to be there at the right time with the right weather and the right light or the location doesn't matter. So lining all of these up, as you can see in all my YouTube videos, the vlog style ones, I'm always trying to be out where there's pretty, I guess you could say the weather is all over the place. Sometimes it's really good light. Sometimes there'll be a storm, but right after the storm, it'll roll out and there'll be the chances for really good light again as it transitions into clear skies. So these little median points going from bad weather to good weather, that's where all the landscape photos are and you have to position yourself in the right location to get that. So hopefully that little primer helped you guys out. Like I said, I have a 10 day free trial that goes into all my landscape photography courses. It also has a course on planning trips, finding locations and my exact tactics and methodologies for doing so. So hopefully that gives you guys some stuff to start with. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Leave me a comment below with a question you may have had. I'll be answering them in future Q and A sessions. Also leaving me a like, or hitting the subscribe button to follow my channel is a huge help. I have a 10 day free trial, which gives you unlimited access to all of the courses that I have that teach every single skill set about landscape and outdoor photography. These are skills that I've tuned, honed, and designed over the last 10 years as a full-time wilderness photographer. So if you'd like to get free access, test out all the courses, learn composition, learn camera technique, photo editing, organization, everything else that goes into the complete creation of wilderness and landscape photography images, check out the link below this video, get signed up, no strings attached, no credit card required. I just want to give you guys access to understand everything that I know about landscape and outdoor photography. So thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next week.